As climate change, scarce resources, and ever-advancing military technologies push the boundaries of humans toward deadlier and protracted conflicts, they look to other domains to gain a competitive advantage. With the world devastated by years of war and depleted of most of its natural resources, the global powers have turned space into its final battlefront. While these battles have not reached the point of firing lasers and other nifty space gadgets like from an unnamed popular science fiction franchise, at this point in the future, due in no small part to Dogecoin billionaires, outfitting large armies of space soldiers has become possible. While there are many possibilities for this war to be fought in space, let's look at the first and most likely battlefield, the Moon. However, before we can even begin to see how this battle would play out, we first need to tackle the major question of if a gun can even be fired in space. When you pull the trigger of any gun, a firing pin strikes the primer that ignites the powder inside the cartridge. These expanding gases force the bullet out of its casing and propel it down the barrel. While there are quite literally hundreds of different powder combinations used throughout the centuries, one of the basic physics principles that remains constant through is the ability of the powders to combust. For that to happen, there must be air. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no air in space, so you cannot fire a gun in a vacuum. But you see, if you thought that, you would be sorely mistaken. Inside each cartridge, you would find that the tiny amount of oxygen contained in each airtight and self-contained cartridge would still allow the gun to be fired. However, once you do fire that gun in space, that's where the otherworldly physics start to take place. Firstly, no matter where you fire a gun in space, you would not hear it, since there is no medium like air or water for sound to travel. However, you would still hear a very small yet very altered sound due to the small vibrations firing the gun would have in your eardrum. When other people shoot a gun because the sound vibrations cannot travel, you would not hear them, so if you forgot to bring that hearing protection with you on your spaceship, don't fear, since it would not make a difference anyway. Once the bullet leaves the barrel of the gun, gravity starts to take effect immediately. That's why when you fire a bullet, it will eventually drop to the ground. However, on the moon, gravity is one-sixth the strength of the gravity on Earth, and this would make for some very interesting dynamics. Taking a look at three of the most common military cartridges, one can see how the ranges at which the firefights can take place in space become exponentially increased. The standard issue pistol round for the US is 9mm, the standard rifle round is the 5.56mm, and the standard machine gun round is the 7.62mm cartridge. These rounds will travel a maximum of 1900, 3400, and 4500 yards respectively. While their effective ranges are much shorter than these, these are the maximum ranges that when fired on a completely flat plane, gravity will eventually pull them down to the ground. Because the moon's gravity is one-sixth the strength of the gravity on Earth, that means you could multiply these distances by a factor of almost two and a half times greater. So that means for a 9mm pistol, a space cadet could fire a 9mm bullet almost 4,700 yards, snipe at an enemy with his rifle at almost 8,300 yards, and suppress their positions with machine gun fire at 11,000 yards. Surely, these numbers are all theoretical since the military, at least publicly, has never tested its weapons in space. But if we're going to go off the straight math, then it should work out this way. Of course, these numbers are just maximum ranges and do not factor in things like the ability to aim or the fact that the visible horizon for the human eye is around 11 nautical miles or about 22,000 yards, so shooting at a target over the horizon would be impractical for the average space soldier. Or would it be? You see, space does some weird things, and one of those is the pull of a gravitational field. Unlike on Earth, where the atmosphere is tens of thousands of meters up, if you're already in space or on an astral body with a limited atmosphere like the Moon or a very strong atmosphere like, say, Jupiter, then bullets can easily get sucked into these atmospheres. As one scientist described it, if you want to shoot yourself on the Moon, you would simply need to stand on a mountain at least 1,600 meters up and fire straight ahead. Now granted, the bullet would have to not impact any other mountain or debris by doing this, and the bullet could eventually circumnavigate the moon and come back to hit its hapless shooter. Eventually. If you fired the gun while in the void of space, it also has some weird physics that would go on. One of those would be its ability to keep moving forever, at least sort of. You see, as discussed previously, space being a vacuum, if there were no forces such as gravity or wind or weather that could impact a bullet's path and sap its energy, it would go on forever. In an ideal scenario, this would be the case. However, the likelihood of your bullet traveling forever in the cosmos with no other forces acting on it would be next to nothing due to all the planetary bodies acting on it. Going back to our earlier example of firing a gun at a planet, if during your lunar firefight you happen to miss your target and the bullet eventually makes its way toward, say, Jupiter, you could count on its strong gravitational pull to suck in your bullet. 
At about three times the strength of Earth's gravitational pull, you could expect that even at distances up to tens of thousands of meters away, the bullet would feel the effect of its gravity and eventually get sucked into orbit. Here, after getting trapped in orbit, the bullet could expect to travel at speeds of more than 17,000 miles per hour. And that's because the speed of objects in orbit is dependent upon their mass, gravity, and altitude among a few other factors. While this would change from planet to planet, one would see the velocities of these bullets increase in magnitudes of 10 or more when placed in such scenarios. Another interesting aspect of firing guns in space is just how hot or cold they would be when impacting a target. On Earth, heat is transferred through a variety of radiation, convection, and conduction, which gives bullets, though hot, a more graduated temperature to its environment than in space. In space, heat only exists as radiation. So, if your bullet travels through, say, a patch of solar wind, it would instantly be melted since the melting point of lead is around 320 degrees Celsius, while solar wind can reach temperatures of a million degrees Celsius. However, all of these data points and figures revolve around firearms that are currently used on Earth that are repurposed for space use. After all, if the human race were ever to fight a war in space, then it's probably safe to assume that the gun designs would also have to be upgraded. But what exactly would the ideal gun in space look like and be made out of to operate in such a harsh environment? First of all, that space assault rifle or pistol with wooden grips would probably be best left back at home. The obvious reason for this is that you should not bring highly flammable things into space due to the intense amount of heat that can be present. A material like wood would instantly catch fire if exposed to such extreme temperatures. Additionally, the water inside the wood would expand and evaporate inside a vacuum. What that means for our hapless space warriors that potentially in the middle of the action their gun could literally start falling apart with the screws and anything else banding the stock to the gun coming apart. But what about the material that makes up the gun itself? Though many people might suggest tungsten as it has the highest melting point of any naturally occurring metal yet is still malleable enough to be bent into shape, you might be mistaken. Rhenium is probably the best metal to make guns out of that would fire in space for a few reasons. Firstly, it is still the second highest heat resistant metal known to humankind. It also has strong electrical resistance properties in space, which is great since everything that goes into space has to be able to dissipate electrostatic charges that are everywhere up there. It's commonly used in the construction of aircraft, so it already has a good track record of good performance in harsh environments. Though people might point out that tungsten also has been used in a number of high-speed and highly successful jet aircraft programs in both the US and Russia and everywhere, they would be correct. However, though tungsten does have a slight edge of iridium and melting point, the metal still beats it out in areas of ductility, electrical resistance, and creep resistance. Despite these advantages, rhenium is usually combined with tungsten to make an alloy to get the best properties of both, and it is this combination that might actually make the best material to manufacture firearms out of for space combat. But what about the bullets that are fired? After all, these bullets would have to survive their flight to their target through potentially much more extreme temperatures and conditions due to the increased distances that space combat can occur at. The answer to this problem might actually be an experimental alloy that was designed in 2015 that to this date has the highest melting point of any experimental or natural substance discovered so far. The alloy that was created was a combination of three elements, hafnium, tantalum, and carbon. The resulting concoction allowed for a blistering melting point of about 7500 degrees Fahrenheit, or about two-thirds the surface temperature of the sun. Such a metal would be perfect to use for space combat since they can handle almost everything space could throw at them, save for maybe solar wind and a black hole. Though this experimental alloy is still being developed at the University of California, there's real hope that it could be used in military applications in the future since a good portion of the funding for this research has come from the US Navy. Despite this influx of cash from Uncle Sam, the last report from 2015 was that scientists were only able to make 100 grams of the material, so it's unlikely such bullets would be available anytime soon. Overall, while firing guns in space might seem like a commander's dream with the increased ranges and zero noise, when one factors in all the harsh realities of space, firing guns might not be as simple as one might think. But who knows, maybe by the time humans actually start fighting space battles, guns might be obsolete anyway.